Hello, today we are going to talk about trigonometric integrals, which can also be described as the primitives of trigonometric functions. The objectives we want to learn in this lesson are the following. Firstly, we will learn to deduce the primitives of the main trigonometric functions, deduce from the immediate, the pseudo-immediates, and finally, use these primitives to calculate more complex integrals. The main requirements we need in order to get started are knowing how to derive the concept of primitive and obtaining pseudo-immediates from the immediates. Let's briefly remember the concept of primitive. As we know, the primitive of a small f is an uppercase f, only if the derivative of the uppercase f is the small f. In other words, if I derive the uppercase f, I therefore must obtain the small f. Keeping this in mind, one can obtain the primitives of trigonometric functions only by knowing how they are derived. If we take the function of x as seen, we know that its derivative is cosine. So, if the derivative of seen is cosine, then the primitive or antiderivative of cosine is simply obtained by working backward. So, this would be the first expression. In this one, we have added the c. And these kinds of expressions are called immediate, as we have already seen in some previous example. They are called immediate because it can be proven immediately that the integral or primitive of the cosine is the sin, and therefore all the primitives of the cosine function are the sin plus a constant. But we do know how to deduce from a simple expression the immediate pseudo-integral. In other words, those integrals in which instead of the variable x within the cosine, we find something more complex, a certain function. We would obtain this expression right here. If within the cosine we have the function of x and outside we have its derivative multiplying, then the same rule applies and the primitive ends up being the sine of the function plus the constant. We have to remember that it is extremely important for the derivative to be multiplying. I cannot stress this enough, the derivative must be multiplying. This comes as a consequence of the rule of the chain in the derivative. This formula highlighted would be the pseudo-immediate linked to the cosine function. In the same way that we obtain the primitive of the cosine, we can obtain the one of the sin. Let's see how. Here we have just obtained the one of the cosine, which happens to be the sin as we have mentioned before. This would be the immediate and from the immediate, we get the pseudo-immediate. And now we know that the derivative of the cosine is the minus sin, and therefore we know that the derivative of the minus cosine is the sin. And by working backward, we know that the primitive of the sin is the minus cosine, plus, of course, the constant. This would be immediate, therefore we can quickly go to the pseudo-immediate, just by adding where there is an x, a function of x, and in the integrand, the derivative of f multiplying. This gives us the pseudo-immediate. Lastly, in trigonometric functions, despite knowing the primitive of the sine and cosine, we could be interested in knowing what happens with the tangent. Basically, uh, with the tangent happens the same as with the rest of the trigonometric functions. Its primitive can be obtained just by remembering the two that we have been seeing today, the sine and the cosine. But how should we proceed? Well, we do know that any other trigonometric expression can be obtained from the sine and the cosine. In this case, we know that the tangent is written as the sine divided by the cosine. Once this function is represented in this way, we should try to use the approach and mindset that we have been talking about in previous lessons. We do not have to have to believe that integrals are calculated quickly and that one has to immediately know the solution. Let's try to analyze the function and identify the different pieces instead. When we break down this integral into its components, we notice that the denominator, represented by the cosine, can be designated as a specific function. Let's call it f. Now, what would be the derivative of this function? Well, the derivative of cosine is negative sine. What I have above is exactly the sine. In other words, I have the derivative almost multiplying. And the only thing missing for it to be multiplying is just a minus. Therefore, I multiply by minus 1, then I divide by minus 1, and I would already have the minus above, exactly the way I wanted. Therefore, what I have now is simply a logarithmic integral in which the function is below and the derivative above. 
And this kind of primitive is what we would call a natural logarithm. Let's continue now with the minus natural logarithm. The minus is what is obtained by adding and removing the sign. And then the natural logarithm of the absolute value of the function plus the constant. In this case, the function was the denominator, which happens to be the cosine, therefore the minus natural logarithm of the absolute value of the cosine of x. Well, this is all. What should we be able to do after today's lesson? First and foremost, we should have understood these trigonometric primitives, knowing the pseudo-immediate kinds, but mainly to use these primitives in more complex contexts that we will be working on as the course continues. Thank you very much for your time. See you in the next lesson.